This guide provides step-by-step -step instructions to build a SharePoint list-based process using the K2 Designer for SharePoint. We'll be acting in the role of a sales administrator who is responsible for ensuring that new customers are onboarded quickly and efficiently. The current manual process requires the admin to ensure that the sales manager reviews and approves the request, credit checks are completed, customer documents are created correctly, and, if necessary, a second level approval by the CFO is completed. This is a time-consuming process and often results in customers not being approved and set up properly. To help resolve these issues, we'll automate the process using K2. Let's walk through the steps for building the process in the K2 Designer for SharePoint. In the first step, we'll create a new process based on the new customers list in the SharePoint site. This library is used to store all new customers who are being onboarded. We'll click on the new customer link located in the list menu to navigate to the new customer list. From the List Tools section, click the List tab and then click on the K2 Process icon on the right-hand side to open the K2 Designer for SharePoint. The K2 Designer for SharePoint is our browser-based designer that gives us the tools we need to build a workflow based on the information we have in the new customers list. On the Welcome screen, we'll select Create a New Process. We'll give the process a name, like Customer Onboarding. Next, we want to select how the process will start. We have a couple of options here, either by manually selecting the process to start or by kicking it off automatically. In this case, we want the process to start as soon as the customer is created in the list, so we'll set it to start process when item is created. Those are the only options we need to choose at this point, so we'll click on Finish. In this step, we'll configure a Sales Manager approval task that will route the new customer information to the appropriate person for review. In addition, we'll configure outcome rules that will allow us to automatically route the new customer request for a second level approval if the requested credit limit is higher than the average of all the other customers in their region. K2 provides a feature called K2 Smart Objects that provides process designers with an easy way to access line of business data for use in their processes. This capability can also be used to give dynamic access to SharePoint lists so that information stored there can be used in business rules that are part of the process. We want to use the new customers list in this manner, so we'll set up a K2 smart object based on that list. In your browser, open a new window and browse to the home page of the SharePoint site. Click on Site Actions and select the K2 Site Settings option. From the Smart Object Management section, click the K2 Smart Object Site Lists and Libraries option. Under Lists, verify that the checkbox next to the New Customers list is checked. If it's not, check it and click the Create button. Now we have a connection to the New Customers list that will allow us to retrieve information from the list and also update the list with new information as part of the process. Go back to the K2 Designer for SharePoint. From the ribbon, drag the User Task Wizard onto the placeholder for the Start step. On the first wizard screen, enter the details for the task. We'll name this step Manager Approval, and we'll provide some instructions that will be displayed for the user assigned to the task. This task will have two possible actions, Approved and Declined. On the next screen, outcomes have been generated for the Approved and Declined actions. However, we want to include a second option to route the request to a second level approval if it's been approved but is high risk, so we need to edit the default outcomes. First, rename the Approved outcome to Approved High Risk. Next, add a new outcome and name it Approved Low Risk. Select the checkbox next to this outcome and click the Move Up button once. Now we need to edit the two approved outcomes. Check the Approved High Risk option and click the Edit button in the toolbar. We want to add an additional rule to check if the requested credit limit is higher than the average for the customer's region, so we'll click on the Add Context Statement button. 
In the Context Browser, expand the SharePoint column node and drag the Requested Credit Limit field over to the left side of the Rule Statement. Select the Greater Than operator. To calculate the average credit limit in the customer's region, we'll use a K2 inline function expression. From the Context Browser, expand the inline function node and drag the expression function to the right side of the rule statement. In the expression configuration window, give the expression a name of calc average of region. Click on the arrow next to the expression name to show additional properties. Select the checkbox to save the expression configuration so we can use it again later in the process. In the search area of the context browser, type average and do a search. Drag over the first average function returned. For the input value for this function, we want to use the list of new customers, so we'll expand the Smart Objects node and find the new customer's Smart Object that we created earlier. Locate the requested credit limit field and drag that over to the value field. We want to set up a filter on the returned results so that we only use information about the customers that are in the region for the new customer we're working with, so we'll set a filter on region. Select the Equals operator. Next, in the Context Browser, expand the SharePoint node and drag the Region field over to the right side of the filter expression. We want to return all items that match the filter we've set, so select that option and then click on Finish to complete the configuration. Click OK to close the Average window. Then click OK to close the Expression window. Finally, click OK to close the Outcome Rule window. Now we want to do a similar configuration on the approved low risk outcome, but in this case we'll set the rule to occur if the credit limit is equal to or lower than the average credit limit in the region. Select the approved low risk outcome and click on the edit button. Click on the add action statement to set this outcome as something that will happen if the request is approved during the manager approval step. Click on the add context statement to add the additional rule statement. Expand the SharePoint node in the Context Browser and drag the Requested Credit Limit field over to the left side of the statement. Select the Less Than or Equal To operator. The right side of the statement will be configured with the same expression we used before, but because we saved that expression, we can use it without needing to reconfigure the logic. Expand the inline function state save node and drag the calc average of region function to the right hand field. Click OK to close the outcome rule window. We've now configured the rules for the outcomes to route the request appropriately based on the credit limit information we have. The next screen allows us to configure the fields we want to show on the form where the user will complete their work. We have context to all the metadata associated with the list via the Context Browser, so we'll include some of the metadata fields including customer name, contact person, region, and requested credit limit. This will provide the manager with the information they need to approve or reject the new customer request. The next screen allows us to select the person, people, or group we want to assign the task to. In a typical scenario, you may set this up to route to the regional sales manager associated with the customer's region, but in this case, to make our sample easier to use, we'll assign the task to the originator. We'll check the box to send an email notification to the participant, and we'll then configure the email using information from the context browser to personalize the email for this task. In this step, we'll configure the CFO approval step, which occurs if it is determined that a second level approval is needed due to the credit limit being requested. From the ribbon, drag the user task wizard onto the placeholder for the approved high risk step. On the first wizard screen, enter the details for the task. We'll name the step CFO approval and we'll provide some instructions that will be displayed for the user assigned to the task. This task will have three possible actions, Approved, Declined, and More Info, which will route the request back to the manager approval for rework. 
On the next screen, outcomes have been generated for all three actions. Instead of creating a new step and duplicating existing logic in the process, we'll configure the steps to route to existing steps and existing logic. The More Info outcome should route to the existing Manager Approval step. The Approved outcome will route to the existing Approved Low Risk step. For the declined outcome, we want a new step to be created, so we'll leave that set as the default. On the User Form screen, we'll again use some of the fields in the Context Browser to customize the information shown to the CFO. We'll include the same SharePoint column information for the new customer. We'll also create a new Bad Debt Ratio field. The CFO will use this field to help determine whether the credit limit being requested is going to be too high risk to accept. In a typical scenario, you may set this up to use a role to route the request to the current CFO, but in this case, to make our sample easier to use, we'll assign the task to the originator. We'll check the box to send an email notification to the participant, and we'll then configure the email using information from the context browser to personalize the email for this task. In this step, we'll configure the steps that will occur when the new customer request has been declined at either the Sales Manager or CFO approval steps. On the ribbon, switch the category to Lists and drag the Delete List Item action to the placeholder associated with the CFO declined step. There is no configuration needed for this action because we already have the context of the item we will be deleting. Rename the step to Delete Customer. If you don't want to reuse the same step for both declined outcomes, you also have the ability to copy and paste steps to cut down on the amount of configuration you need to do. In this case, we'll copy our Delete Customer step by holding down the Control key and dragging the step down to the second declined placeholder. Select the Copy option to copy the step. In this step, we want to go back to the beginning of the process to add a new step that will calculate the bad debt ratio for the customer's region. This information is used by the CFO to determine whether a high-risk credit request should be approved and is stored by the finance team in an Excel spreadsheet. We'll use K2's Excel inline functions to retrieve the data. To add a new step to an existing part of the process, hover the mouse cursor over the line where you want to add the step and click on the Insert New Step option. On the ribbon, switch to the General category and drag the Set Data Fields action onto the newly created placeholder. K2 provides a set of inline functions specifically for use with Microsoft Excel, so we'll expand the inline functions Excel node in the context browser and drag the get cell with input function over to the value for the bad debt ratio data field. The bad debt ratio Excel spreadsheet is located in the shared documents library on your SharePoint site. Type the URL for that file in the location field. For the sheet name, we'll use region. The cell that takes an input value is G4, and the value we want to pass in is the customer's region, so we'll grab that field from the SharePoint column node in the Context Browser. We'll retrieve our output value from cell H4. If we switch over to the Excel spreadsheet, we can see that the data in cell H4 automatically updates whenever we change the value in cell G4. The percentage information displayed is the data that will be dynamically retrieved from the process at runtime. Click OK to finish the inline function configuration. Click OK to finish the set data field action. Rename the step to Get Bad Debt Ratio and update the outcome to be Next. In this step, we'll configure the actions for the approved branch of the process, including a placeholder step to enter the customer into a CRM system, and steps to create and update customer-specific versions of required documentation. 
As part of a typical customer onboarding scenario, you might want to add the customer to a CRM system like Microsoft Dynamics CRM. K2 provides out-of-the-box support for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. However, the trial environment has not been configured with CRM, so for illustrative purposes, we'll add a placeholder that represents that step in the process. From the ribbon, drag the placeholder action onto the step associated with the approved low risk path. Rename the step to Add Customer to CRM. Add a new outcome named Next to this step. Next, we'll create a customer NDA document using the Create Document action. From the ribbon, select the Document category and drag the action to the Next step. The Customer Contracts document library on our SharePoint site is where we store all customer documents, so we'll select that library. A document using the template stored in that library will be created and saved there. We want to give the file a unique name, so we'll use the Customer Name field from the SharePoint node. Type DOCX after the name to give it the correct file type extension. Rename the step to Create Customer NDA. Add an outcome called Next. Next, we want to update our newly created NDA document with the customer's details, so we'll drag over the Update Document Content Control action. This action utilizes Word's content controls so we can dynamically update pieces of information within the document automatically. The text we want to use to update the document is the customer name, so we'll drag that field over from the SharePoint node in the context browser. The name of the content control we're updating in the Word template is company name. Click OK to finish the wizard. Rename the step to Update NDA. Add a new outcome called Next. Finally, we want to convert the completed Word document to a finalized PDF that we can send to the customer. Drag the Convert Documents wizard over to the new step. Select the Customer Contract Document Library as the output location. This wizard makes use of the Word Services capabilities that are included in SharePoint 2010, so the Save As drop menu displays the list of document types supported by Word Services. For this example, we'll select PDF. Click Finish to close the wizard. Now that the process has been configured, we are ready to deploy the process to the K2 server. First, we need to set up the process so that you have full administrative rights to see all the process details. Click on the File tab located above the ribbon and select Configure Process Settings Process Rights. In the search box, type your username and click on the magnifying glass to search. Once found, drag your username over and select the Admin checkbox. Once the process rights have been set, we're ready to deploy the process. Click on the File tab and select Deploy. This will automatically save the process and will load the deployment wizard that will guide you through the steps to deploy the process. Click Next to begin the Check and Build step. This step verifies that all actions in the process are configured correctly. Click Next to deploy the process. This step may take several minutes. Once complete, a message will be displayed and the Finish button will be activated. Click Finish to complete the wizard.